I'll hear what they'll say to their student. Plus, you saw all the explosions and fires. Now see how Asteroid was made. Next. Live at 11, this is KGW, Northwest News Channel 8. The picket lines are gone, and for now, so are the substitute teachers. But tonight, security guards remain posted outside schools in Sandy. In just about eight hours, Sandy students will have their regular teachers back. Just to be there, I think, is what they need. And hopefully, this time we get to stay. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for staying up with us tonight at 11. I'm Jim Benneman. Hello, I'm Carol Jensen. Our top story tonight, Sandy teachers are preparing class plans and packing up school supplies. That's because they'll be back in class tomorrow morning, but for how long? The News Channel's Leslie Knopp just back from Sandy tonight. What are the teachers saying at this point? Well, Jim and Carol, the teachers are thrilled to be back in the classrooms, but disappointed they still have no contract. Their strike was declared illegal, but teachers have already filed a strike again. And with all this going on, they still hope it's business as usual in the classroom. I need to take that off. Elementary school teachers Yvonne and Jeff Stave are moving back to school. I'm glad to be going back to see my kids. They'll bring back school supplies and explanations. And I will probably use that, that the district and the teachers are trying to solve their problems. And one of the things you can do is just walk away. And that's kind of what we're doing, unfortunately. This is where teachers have been since February 6th. Picket lines. You should not be really to the community, no. Even when things got angry, teachers say they hope they set a good example. At some schools, there are signs students think so. And I says, well, when I get back, we'll have another one. Pam Beasley plans a belated Valentine's Day party. She makes gifts for her kindergartners and thinks about what she'll say. I think I'll say it's like a, a dream, you know, that for right now we'll remember it really strongly, but hopefully in time we can forget about the bad things and we can just keep going with the good. But will they? The district isn't budging on its contract offer, no raise more than 2%. So another strike might be unavoidable. That certainly is a nice feeling to know they'll be back in the classroom. It's pretty uncharted waters. We hope they'll stay and won't decide to walk out again. But, you know, I kind of feel like we've been here before with a strike looming. Okay. That's why Yvonne is leaving most of her school items piled in her garage. In one week, she could be moving home once again. And what about the parents? Well, half the kids in the district stayed home during the strike, and many tell us they are enthusiastically sending their kids back to school, but are prepared to pull them out again if teachers strike again on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that's where it may be headed. Maybe. Yeah. Thank you, Leslie. They came from all over Oregon to demand more money for education. But they weren't too happy about what they heard. Our school. At noon, hundreds of parents, teachers, and students gathered on the steps of the state capitol. They told legislators they want long-term funding for a quality school system in Oregon. The group then moved indoors, hoping to speak with lawmakers. Portland Mayor Vera Katz, also in Salem, visited the governor's office. But John Kidsopper says his best-case budget will still mean teacher layoffs. We have a News Channel follow-up for you tonight on that fire that lit up southeast Portland on Friday. Late today, we revisited the Rex Arms Apartments in Sky 8. You can see that patchwork of new roofing materials on the rooftop. Those are the areas where flames shot through the roof. And tonight, we checked out the view from the street at southeast 12th and Belmont. The apartment building still sits empty, but that will be changing this week. The Red Cross has been providing emergency food and shelter for people burned out of the Rex Arms Apartments. The help's been available here at the Four Square Church Gymnasium. About 30 apartment residents will be allowed back into their homes this week, perhaps as early as tomorrow. Another 15 are expected back in sometime next week. A woman who was shot and wounded by her husband is getting better. Josephine Gomez is in the right on this photo. The photo of the shooting took place last week at this apartment complex in Gresham. Mrs. Gomez has improved from critical to serious condition. Her husband, Stephen Gomez, is a Portland police officer. He says the shooting was accidental. The case will soon go to the grand jury.
They are still not talking to the police. In fact, they didn't speak to anyone when they returned to Colorado tonight. This is Patsy Ramsey and her son arriving in Denver this evening after a long weekend in Atlanta. They were there for the questioning of John Ramsey's ex-wife and his two older children. Delta Airlines arranged for this private car for the family's use. The Ramsey's daughter, John Bonet, a child beauty queen, was found murdered in their home on the day after Christmas. The rumors are wrong. The chief lawyer for Oklahoma City bombing suspect Timothy McVeigh says not all of the defense lawyers are making $125 an hour. Stephen Jones says there are 14 lawyers working on McVeigh's case, but he says only four of them earn that much money. The rest take home much less. O.J. Simpson's friends are urging him to get away from all the controversy in L.A. and move to South Florida. This is where Simpson lives now. It is probably the most photographed mansion in all of America. This week, Newsweek magazine reports Simpson is looking to leave, however. He goes to Miami a lot to play golf, and that's where he went after the criminal trial. Meantime, Newsweek also says Simpson is changing his legal team again. Robert Baker was the lead attorney during the recent civil trial, but he has left the case and won't be handling any of the appeals, according to Newsweek. If you want to go to Florida or anywhere else, now's the time to get your tickets. American Airlines is trying to fill its planes and restore its image by cutting fares, and now other airlines are matching those discounts. American has cut some of its prices by 50%. This fairware, fair war, comes just a few days after President Clinton ordered Americans' pilots to stay on the job during a 60-day cooling-off period. Here are just a few of the good deals. Round trip Portland to Chicago for $198 on American. How about Portland to Dallas round trip? Same price. And to New York City and back for $359. A rough landing today for a Continental Airlines jet in Newark, New Jersey. The nose gear collapsed. The plane made it halfway down the runway before that nose gear just buckled. 141 passengers were on board and no one was hurt. A member of the Northwest Coast Guard dies trying to rescue others. He gave more than a lot of people. He went above and beyond the call of duty to save my son and us, my sister and me. Tonight, a man from Milwaukee remembers his hero. A fire sends flames and thick smoke shooting hundreds of feet in the air. We'll show you more. Bit of wet weather on the way. Here it is. Should arrive, well, tomorrow. Tell you more in just a few minutes. And you just watched big chunks of rock sail down from outer space and decimate a city in the NBC movie Asteroid. Tonight, find out how it's all done. The special effects later on the News Channel. This edition of News Channel 8 is closed captioned through a generous grant from Safeway. Nobody does it better for less. This News Channel 8 segment brought to you by your Northwest Chevrolet Geo dealers. Now, with Jen Benjamin and Carol Jensen, this is KGW, Northwest News Channel 8. A Coast Guardsman who died during a rescue effort last week proved his courage long before that. David Bosley rescued Mark Nelson and his family four years ago. Nelson is from Milwaukee. News Channel's Tina Kim spoke with Nelson about the loss of his hero. She's in the newsroom with this story tonight. Tina? Well, Carol, on Wednesday, Mark Nelson plans to attend a memorial service for David Bosley and two other Coast Guardsmen who died last week. Nelson says he won't forget Bosley's courage and skill. On the cart. Mark Nelson manages a gas station in Multnomah Village. Nelson says he can do his job today because of this man, David Bosley. He was a hero. Saved our lives. It, it was a very important time in my life and something I'll never forget. And you don't get somebody that saves your life. Nelson doesn't forget four years ago when Bosley saved him, his son, and his sister. And now Nelson mourns for David Bosley. Bosley died Wednesday in the waters of La Push, Washington. He and two others went under after their boat capsized during a rescue mission. He jumped in the water for my son and he risked his own life for him. And he's the same age as I am, you know, and so he's going out there rescuing more people and this time it cost him his life. The Coast Guard lifeboat that overturned Wednesday was similar to the one rescuers used to save Nelson and his family that March day in 1993 near Newport. The next thing I know, then Dave was alongside the boat watching for me and I got washed to the boat and he helped me to get in the boat. Then while he was seeing me, he spotted my sister. Nelson videotaped Bosley the day a television show reenacted their rescue. Nelson the remembers the guardsman's humble here. manner. He was very modest back then. It's, it's my job. I was doing my job, and uh, it, he didn't sound like it was, you know, yeah, I'm glad I saved him. I'm glad you guys are all okay. 
but I did what I was supposed to do. He was a great guy and did his job well. And I wish there was something I could do. I repay what he's done. Petty Officer David Bosley received the Coast Guard Commendation Medal for his work. Bosley was 36 years old. Thank you, Tina. A spectacular fire at a power plant in Austin, Texas today. Smoke and flame soared hundreds of feet as an electric utility transformer burned out of control. The fire caused power outages for some 3,500 customers. Investigators don't know what caused the fire yet, and utility crews don't know when they'll have everyone's power back. Tonight, police in Boston are looking for the person who stole an expensive autographed script of the final episode of Cheers. And it might be tough to identify that person. The script was up for bid at a charity auction. It was a theme auction, so bidders were wearing masks. When the Cheers script reached $1,000, somebody swiped it. Everyone in the cast had signed it. Police are looking at security camera video, hoping to figure out who stole it. Iraq has found another reason to dislike the United States. An Iraqi government newspaper says the Internet is the end of civilization, cultures, interests, and ethics. And it says it's all America's fault. The Iraqi government says that the Internet is part of a plot to enter into every house in the world. There is no Internet access in Iraq. A job well done in outer space tonight, but just as these astronauts were ready to go back inside the shuttle, they discover new problems. This small piece of rock may finally help us solve one of our oldest mysteries. Find out what it is. Plus, you saw an asteroid slam into the United States tonight on the News Channel. So how do they make it look so real? We'll let you in on the magic behind the special effects. When you see news happen in Oregon, call the News Channel. Just press pound TV8 on your AT&T wireless services cellular phone. We pay for the call, and you could receive $10 worth of free airtime. This News Channel 8 segment is brought to you by Northwest Chrysler Plymouth Dealers. Astronauts on board the shuttle Discovery have just finished a major repair mission tonight. Here they are working on the Hubble Space Telescope. Astronauts carefully place thermal blankets outside the telescope to cover its torn insulation. The sun damaged the outer shell of the $2 billion telescope. The new layer of insulation will protect it from heat and cold. But just as they finish these repairs, Mission Control noticed another problem with the part that moves the telescope. And as of now, no plans yet to take care of that problem. And you saw asteroids falling from outer space in NBC's movie tonight. In just a few minutes, we'll show you how they come up with all those awesome special effects. That's what people say about you, Joe. Day after day, you hit the forecast, they say, it? how does he do that? Special effects. <laughs> <laughs> we just call in the special effects crew, and they take care of everything for us. Let's take you outside earlier this evening, as seen from Sky 8, uh, the late or early evening sunset. Pretty pictures tonight uh, around the area, and I'm sure that uh, if you were out and about around sunset, you saw some of this beautiful sky that Kim Ragnoni and the rest of the crew aboard Sky 8 were watching. Uh, not much in the way of shower activity now around the state, some up to the east of Seattle, but uh, the showers have backed off considerably here in western Oregon. A few more still in western Montana and parts of Idaho. That system's moving away. We've got a little bit of a ridge of high pressure up over us right now, and that should be with us through most of tomorrow. But this system pushing on in from the Pacific will bring clouds and then some rain to the area um, late tomorrow afternoon. In fact, on the coastline, as this system approaches, you'll start to see the winds pick up quite a bit. A gust to 50 miles per hour, especially at the headlands tomorrow afternoon. 28 right now over Redmond, 32 degrees on the hour in Baker City, 43 in Pendleton, 44 degrees down in Eugene, and 41 at this time for our friends in Astoria. The national radar shows a very, very quiet picture around the country, just a few snow showers in northern New York, some rain in Massachusetts, and some snow in northern Maine. Otherwise, the east nice and dry and scattered activity throughout the western United States. Rain at lower elevations, snow at higher elevations. 72 right now in Miami. Kansas City 56, Chicago at 42 degrees on the hour, 63 at Phoenix, 33 over in Boise, and Seattle right now at 44 degrees. Highs around the country tomorrow, 70s for the southeast, should be a nice day there, but as you can take notice, no major cold outbreaks going on. The coldest temperatures on the map tomorrow, 30s for the Dakotas and parts of Minnesota. On the hour, partial clearing with 45 degrees, the humidity at 89%, we have an east wind at 3, the barometer 30.26, 
and it's on the rise. Forecasts look like this. First of all, for the coastline, there is a gale warning in effect for the rest of tonight. West winds at 15 knots, swells out of the west at 10 feet. Rain developing on the beaches tomorrow with winds south 30, gusting to 50. Up in the Cascades, some rain moving in late in the day. Snow level above 5,500 feet. Central part of the state, increasing clouds, a chance of a sprinkle or two tomorrow. East side, increasing clouds with highs in the 40s, but up to 54 for Pendleton. In the gorge tomorrow, look for some sunshine east end, but rain developing west end, highs in the lower 50s. In the valley tomorrow, rain developing after some morning fog, highs 53 to 57. And here in the Portland-Vancouver metropolitan area, partial clearing tonight, some patchy fog below 40 degrees. Tomorrow, rain developing in the afternoon, 51 degrees should do it for a high. Southeast winds at 10 to 20. Well, that should uh, taper off to showers by Wednesday, 52 degrees for a high temperature reading. Thursday, partial clearing, but still a chance of a shower or two, 53. And then Friday and Saturday, partly cloudy skies, low to mid-50s. Mm. Not bad. Not at all. We like it, Joe. Okay, good. Thanks. You bet. It is one of our oldest mysteries. What happened to the dinosaurs? You heard the most common theory in tonight's NBC movie, Asteroid. Scientists think that an asteroid killed them. Now, scientists drilling off the Florida coast say they have found proof 300 feet beneath the ocean floor. They found green glass pebbles. They say it's the ocean bottom baked by the force of the asteroid's impact. The rusty brown color is what's left of the asteroid. Scientists say this proves that an asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs. Tonight's movie had some of the most elaborate special effects ever seen on television. Right now, the news channel's Carl Click shows us the producers had to think small to put on a big show. We watched the Midwest get bombarded by asteroid fragments the last two nights. We know it didn't actually happen, but it sure looked real. That's what special effects are all about. In order to be good, a special effect has to look real, like me here, getting out of the way of all these stars. Of course, this isn't a good special effect, but it does illustrate a point about how they did things for this movie. They used things smaller than their actual size, like for me, this picture, or for the movie, they used miniature models. In Asteroid, a tanker truck gets hit. Well, this was the tanker truck, a model. And this is how they filmed it getting hit by that asteroid. They spent days building a model of a dam, only to have it get hit by an asteroid. The company that did the special effects for the movie Twister worked on Asteroid. Here they blow up a small model of a street in Dallas, Texas. It doesn't look like much right now, but when you see it shrunken down, put in with the live action that we shot in Dallas, then it has a real reality base to it, and it becomes quite frightening. And here's what that scene looked like in the television movie. In something like this, you spend, may spend two to three weeks. A lot of people... Uh, getting ready for one take, and it generally goes off in about one second. So you have one second to get it right with four cameras. Here are those cameras around a miniature city street with model cars. They let that water go and film it from four different angles. Cut it together really fast with slow motion, and nobody has time to see what's a model. They just see the action the director wants us to believe is real. Carl Click, KGW, Northwest News Channel 8. How does a miniseries like this compare to a major motion picture? Well, here's an example. It took six months to shoot the four hours of television you saw during Asteroid. A similar action film for the big screen would be about two hours long and take more than a year and a half to make. And it does look real, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, had me fooled. Halftime of the Portland Power game looked more like gym class tonight. We'll tell you why the message behind this heart-racing routine is so important. That story in two minutes. March 3rd, the weather's about to change. As the Northwest's largest, most experienced weather team welcomes meteorologist Matt Savino. Join Matt and make the switch to Northwest News Channel 8. This News Channel 8 segment is brought to you by your friendly Northwest Dodge dealer. Northwest News Channel 8 and Northwest Cable News, working together to bring you news that matters to the Northwest. of the Portland Power game looked a little different tonight. Check out the American Heart Association jump rope team. They performed a heart racing routine. The group of 20 jumpers ranges from 6 to 18 years old. They wanted the fans in the stands to know that February is American Heart Month. 
the workout just watching them. That's not easy to do. <laughs> no, not it easy isn't. to do. And uh, we you should have say, power highlights later in the Yes, we are. And the, and the Blazers had the night off, which is good because they got a very, very tough road trip Don't coming up. Yeah. Yep, it was a great weekend for both the Blazers and Sonics. Blazers had today off and rest of tomorrow off. Sonics, meanwhile, at work in Key Arena and Gary Payton. For the fourth straight game since the All-Star break, leads the way for the Sonics, as did Detlef Shrimp, who gets little credit but works harder than anybody on this team. Seattle beat Boston 113 to 108, and the Sonics seem to have worked out their locker room problems during the break, and they're playing pretty well. At Indiana, watch this. Toronto's Doug Christie was called for a foul with one-tenth of a second left, and his team leading by a point. Wasn't a great call, but it sent Raptors coach Daryl Walker into a frenzied state. Walker went mental. He grabbed the ball. He then spikes the ball. He yells at anybody who would listen. He got two technicals, which meant Indiana got four free throws. They hit each one of them, and they win. 103-100. And a coach wants his players to be under control. Just, just not good. That's why he's a young coach in Orlando. Brian Hill is still the coach. We're expected to hear that he's going to get fired tomorrow. Hope he's not hearing it here first. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? No, he's not, because he's in. Let's move on. Indiana, Houston beats Atlanta. Washington beats Milwaukee and Dallas over Vancouver. All right, Ryan Robertson launched and landed this 30-footer at the halftime horn, gave Kansas a lead over Missouri. Remember, it was Missouri who beat Kansas, handed them their first loss earlier this year. Dunk of the year college basketball. Watch this. Left-hander, Ryan LaFrance. Wow, that'll leave a mark. Number one Jayhawks beat Missouri 79-67. Hey, Jerry Tarkanian returned to his old home Vegas and UNLV tonight. Team got drilled, Fresno State. I thought this was a nice gesture, though. The UNLV coach, Billy Baino, comes over. Gives, that's a nice gesture by him. And, of course, his team went on to win. But Tark came back. You'll hear more about this tomorrow. But Jerry Tarkanian is still the most recognizable face in that city's history. Portland Power wrapping up their first season in the ABL. And despite a very average record, they are among the league leaders in attendance. And tonight, another example of that. A great crowd at the Coliseum. Didn't hurt the Seattle rain were in town. And it was Portland raining in three-pointers. This is Lisa Harrison who drills it. The power led comfortably at half, and they only added to it. Sheila Frost will score off the glass. Portland had more power tonight and wins it pretty easy, 87 to 71. In Tampa, Terry Crisp watched his team pull off the surprise finish of the night. Trailing 3-2, 30 seconds left. Sean Burr wrestles the puck from Detroit's Mike Vernon. Right, oh, what, you can't, oh. Damon Lankow scores. Lightning get a 3-3 tie out of what should have been a 3-2 loss. Seahawks. Close to trading quarterback Rick Meyer to the Chicago Bears. In return, Seattle would get the 11th pick in the upcoming NFL draft. Meyer has never really clicked with the Seahawks, but other teams seem to be interested. 49ers want Meyer, but we are told tonight the Bears have an offer on the table, and all Meyer has to do is sign that deal. We go to Spain, the Spanish Soccer League, which, surprisingly enough, is in Spain. Anyway, Balboa's Ismael Ursais off his chest, and the game winner. Is that a bicycle kick? Yes. All right. Joe says this is a bicycle kick. Half a little bicycle. sidewinder. Half bicycle. A small bicycle. Yeah, a tricycle. A tricycle <laughs> kick. <laughs> and that was the winner. I've jumped rope. That's the best goal I've seen this month. I haven't seen them all. Boy. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Proof that I soccer that. players are athletes. You can do that? Yeah, most. No. Oh. <laughs> This year's Golden Globe Award winner for Best Foreign Film shows in Portland tonight. A preview of the film, Coila, when the news channel comes back. We'll be back tomorrow morning on the Northwest News Channel. I'm not really in a hurry. Brenda Braxton and Carl Click will be here with the latest news. Dave Seleski has your Tuesday forecast. And Rosie Fialo takes a live look at your morning drive. The News Channel's Sunrise Edition starts at 5.30. Big crowd formed outside the Broadway Metroplex movie theater tonight. Everyone had a ticket for the premiere of Coila, and that's tonight's ticket. It's just one of the films showcased in Portland's International Film Festival. It's a story of a struggling Czech musician who marries a Russian woman for the money. She disappears, leaving him to care for her son. Uh, it's just a real heartwarming, endearing story. You know, it has some, a lot of poignancy and, and bittersweet moments. And it, it was nominated for the uh, Best Foreign Film Oscar. That Oscar nomination is the big attraction for the fans. Coila opens in Portland on Friday. The festival includes films from some 30 countries. It runs through March 2nd 
And as we saw again tonight, it generates a lot of excitement, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, thank goodness for the subtitles. It really <laughs> helps. Do they have cartoons? <laughs> you never know, Jim. You never know. Thanks for joining us. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. You've just watched Northwest News Channel 8, where the news comes first. Thanks for making us your first choice for news. Introducing another first for News Channel 8. We've expanded our Skycam coverage of the Northwest to include the first Skycam in Salem. See it live from our new Northwest Skycam in Salem at the Capitol Mall, only on Northwest News Channel 8. What to do?